So two weeks is the end of two weeks. What uh, to go, Denny Green? Are they what you thought they were, or what's? Uh... <laughs> wow. Um, it had a good day today. Um, today we had a ton of guys. We've got a bunch of guys that whatever it is, I don't know if it's allergies or just funk kind of illness. Got a, a lot of guys battling through that, and, and today could have been a little bit of a, a lull day, and, and we had a very productive day. And so did, did a, a little uh, uh, live work, did a little situational red zone, situational second along kind of scenarios, and, and a lot of stuff accomplished. But two weeks in, are you kind of where this team has gone from the first week? Are you satisfied with that? Well, you're never satisfied, but, but we're on the right trajectory, and, and, and our guys are, are more experienced guys. That are, I was going to say our older guys, but our more experienced guys are helping our less experienced guys. And there's a ton of those less experienced guys uh, getting a lot of reps right now. Uh, but but the, the the work ethic, the improvement in in scheme knowledge is has been very good. You know, and, and this this part of the spring, you want to, you want to see that because you're right about it. The full install time on both sides. Not quite totally in installed on both sides, but when all that stuff starts adding up on guys, sometimes it's, you know, slow down or, or the tempo's not as good, but we've done a good job of maintaining that. Can you identify either an area or position where you feel like you're ahead of the game so far compared to where you thought you'd be and maybe one where you're not as close to where you thought you'd be at this point? Uh, I can't only because I don't do that. I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, but uh, I think I think we just continue to push. And, you know, I think is if you set, okay, we'll be happy if this guy does A and B and He's capable of doing C, D, and E. Then you've, you know, you've kind of done him a disservice. And so we just try to push the envelope, and and but very happy with where everybody is mentally. Are we, you know, doing everything exactly how we'd like to? Absolutely not. And that's that's where we just got to keep pushing. And these guys have. Eric, well, Chief Buckner, Arm said, all live together, all same grid. Do you, over the years, have you seen when people do have that chemistry off the field, it translate? Absolutely, absolutely. And those, those kind of things, whether it's that position or the O line, when you, you can just look at each other and know, or maybe one word, you know, means fifty. Uh, in, in some of those cases, those those types of relationships, that that chemistry is invaluable, and I think that's a, a huge deal for our team. Kind of how our guys live. Uh, a little bit differently. We've got a lot of guys that aren't from here, you know, so that, that, that chemistry is almost um, a necessity and, and it's done nothing but concrete a lot of a lot of neat guys in, in, in relationships. Much of that chemistry factors into recruiting of you know, overall talent, but then they have to fit in as well. A lot, a lot. You know, I remember last year when Farrell Brown, you know, from Cleveland, Ohio was jogging across the, the, yeah. the field over there to go fishing with uh, Cody you know they had his fishing hat on his Montana mode going and and that kind of stuff is so cool and and you know we sell that a lot in recruiting we have we do have a lot of guys that aren't from here and and when you're you're kind of forced in that position uh, you know some of these guys from Portland might have a lot of Thanksgiving dinner guests uh, but it's it's it, that helps you know it, you kind of turn a negative into a positive in some regard but but that 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 again that that's that's been nothing but good as far as we're concerned. Eric Armstead had a lot of hype specific coming in, specifically him, and, and he said he has big expectations for himself. He wants to be a dominant player next year. Do you see him getting to that level in this upcoming year? Well, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's the kind of guy that, that when you have those uh, expectations and making those statements, now you got to have the ability to back it up, and he does. And so now it's just a matter of putting all those things together consistently. You know, any any great player, whether it's you look at Deion Jordan or somebody like that, that, that has kind of just steadily improved, when you have the ability, the discipline, the will, the toughness, now he's ha he just has to put all that together consistently. And can he and will he? Uh, there's no reason not to. You know, he's the type of guy that it's on him if he doesn't, you know, kind of a deal. And I don't mean that in any negative way. It's That's a neat thing to be able to say about somebody is, is – everything's there. Now just go out and, and, and do it. Switching to the offense, Fronis is now going to be a three-year starter as center. How important is what he brings um, to the offensive line specifically and in, in what he's doing throughout a game, getting everybody set, getting everybody in the right line? Huge. I mean, Fronis is such a great guy. He's one of my favorite guys. He's, he's uh, again, kind of along the lines of, of Marcus in not quite as vocal or as assertive as, as he, he should and could be, but he's, he's grown into that role more and more and, and a guy that, that just... He knows he's been there, he's done that, and he can improve a lot too from a, a technique standpoint. And he's the type of guy that watches the film once and goes, "Okay, we'll fix it," and "Okay, we'll fix that." And, and but his leadership has grown and developed uh, immeasurably. Thanks, Mark.